Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we are still preparing for our Mammoth Uber mission to Juno! Uh, in the background, you will see all the vessels running past that we have been preparing. Uh, we're going to gloss over the fact that we haven't done the Ike probe yet. Um, that That is coming, but yeah... There we go. So, what I'm working on right now is right in the middle, I obviously need some sort of interplanetary core. This is like a bunch of engines down the bottom with a good fuel tank in the middle. And make sure that we've got enough Delta V to get us from Kerbin to Juna, because all of these things are going into orbit. Obviously, the number one choice of engine here is the atomic engine at the bottom there. Uh, just, just getting the Delta, uh, not the Delta V, the ISP that we need. Uh, around the central orange core, we will see that we've put three docking ports because basically, well, we, we need to get three vehicles around it. We have the uh, Dr. Hang Hang Glider. We have the ever so helpful Juna buggy. And we also have the Ike Probe, which once again, I know I've not done yet, but it, we're going to leave space for it. We know what its weight constraints are. We know what we want. So it should be next to no effort at all to put all these things together to make a wonderful robotic probe. So my plan here is to surround that central core with as much like lifting technology as I can to be able to get this thing into orbit without even touching the orange fuel tank for propulsion uh, this obviously means that we're gonna have quite a lot of stuff around there so if we just perform a small cut we can take a look at this finished beast and it is a beast uh, we've got the um, full-blown ARM mission tanks down at the bottom there I can never remember exactly what they're called uh, orange fuel tanks on top of those massive um, solid boosters on the side and basically just a whole load of Delta V to get this up into orbit Unfortunately, there was a little bit of a, a, an unplanned rapid dis disassembly on the go there. I'm not even sure what collided to make that happen, but it was quite a, a pretty thing to happen afterwards. Okay, so one, one of the things you will notice around here is on top of each of these, uh, I'm going to call them outside stages. You see we've got four around the middle. Each one of those actually has a little probe core on top of it because whilst we do have 1.2 million credits or, or routes, sorry, to play with here, this is an expensive vessel, a, a very expensive vessel, and I'm quite willing to let the solid boosters go. Uh, solid boosters, relatively cheap, nice and easy to, uh, to strap around the outside and not worry about. But these orange tanks and these ARM boosters down the bottom, that, that is more expensive. So I want to try and bring this stuff back. This is going to mean that we need control after we separate from it. So we need to get ourselves up there and get ourselves into a nice circular orbit round about 90 kilometers. Uh, I'm not sure why I picked 90. It just seemed like a good height to go for that wasn't kind of in my main uh, transfer orbit, if you will. Uh, normally I park stuff at around about 80, so I didn't want to put this at 80. Performing the last couple of maneuvers here to make sure that we are in a perfectly circular orbit before disconnecting the final layers of staging. I, th I think this is a beautiful view. Uh, unfortunately, one of the things that I started doing was turning things around in the shadow of the planet. Now, this normally wouldn't be a bit of a problem, but it did leave me with no reference point to point my uh, solar panels at, which as uh, we are just about to find out as we time warp our way around to try and find the sun, ends up with at least one of my units facing in completely the wrong direction, thus rendering it like inoperable I, I couldn't do anything with the unit that was facing the wrong way now but all we need to do is point ourselves into a retrograde direction for all these units here uh, these things were slow like um, the, the only SAS control they had was the probe body up on top and oh my that that was not not suitable for the amount of, um, of mass that was in these tanks all right, but anyway, one of these we managed to push around into the right direction and make sure that we uh, we slowed ourselves down enough. Indeed, we're just going as fast as we can to try and get these all down as fast as possible because, you know, whilst it is, the, like, possibly one of the most important parts of this mission, trying to get, like, rec recover as much money back as we can, it's not the most exciting part. The most exciting part, obviously, being the docking of all the equipment together. But yeah, as I say, this is this is a very vital part of what's going on here, and I, d I did do it just a little bit wrong. Um, in my my haste to get everything down at the same time, I ended up making it so uh, a few things were in the atmosphere together. Uh, and as we all know, this is not a good situation to get into in Kerbal because if they're more than like two kilometers apart, one of them is going to disappear. Very nearly collided with my ship there. I actually thought that uh, everything was going to be over. Like I, I pressed Z to go full throttle, uh, and then I realised I was pointed towards the 
yeah, what I'm going to call the pushing unit. Uh, yeah, no, that was uh, a bit of a, a, a nail a nail biting moment. But here we go. Well, first first atmospheric entry for one of these units. We're not really trying to get it like overly close. We just want to get close enough that we can make a, a, a decent recovery and not have to worry about all this space junk. It's not just space junk, as I say, it is the money as well. But the space junk is uh, an issue to worry about. Here we have the last couple of hundred meters here coming down for a crash, and it was actually a crash. Uh, this is this is one of the things that I was uh, a little bit gutted about what was going on here. Uh, uh, aside from here i've realized that we are missing one of the units obviously it went down into the atmosphere it all got eaten up by the um the loading kraken i'm gonna call it all right and now we have one of the uh the the, the amazing times for the beauty shots uh i just kind of so as as you guys know the these long descents are what i find one of the most boring parts of this game so try, trying to get these down as quick as possible was definitely like one of my highest priorities and aside from a rocket assisted landing this was literally the fastest way i could think of doing it um maybe we could have got down a little bit faster if we saved just a little bit more fuel to push ourselves through the atmosphere quicker i i don't know whether that would be good or not but another explosion amazing and cactus i didn't realize there were cactus out in the desert i knew there were trees but yeah there we go anyway on with uh sort of trying to sort out this the Ignus, the landing craft next. We need to try and get this up into orbit. Now, this should be a relatively easy affair. Um, I mean, all we need to do is try and get, like, uh, what was it? 4,500 4, Delta V underneath that thing, which this tank alone gives us 3,000 off. So, just strapping a load of solid boosters around the outside should do the trick. At least according to the Kerbal Engineer, it should do. Uh, right, so we're going to take off here. You'll see that I am bringing the original three with me. This is one of the first missions that... Well, one of the first in my career mode i suppose is the way to put it uh like the first time these guys have gone to juno so we need the pr big guns to get out here jeb bill and bob all coming along uh hopefully this will actually get um bob some some experience but i don't think he was the one that went anywhere is bob the scientist or is bill the scientist i can never remember which one of those two is is which but anyway the scientist has been to the moon the engineer has not i don't think the engineer has even been off planet yet so a momentous day for many, many reasons today. Uh, the lift went almost entirely without a hitch. You'll see that, due, uh, that looking at my targeting reticule and my prograde reticule, we aren't exactly on the uh, inclination that we were looking for here. But it was close enough that doing the rendezvous should hopefully be able to get us close enough. Um, throwing away our lifting stage, we're using, now using our landing um, engines and this, this wasn't really the idea that I was going for here. I was kind of hoping that the skipper would get us close enough but you know whatever that this is the way that it goes sometimes obviously i didn't take quite the optimal route through the atmosphere which to be fair i never really do anyway and we're just going to try and do our best to get as close as possible using these um rendezvous markers over here uh, it turns out we can get very close indeed in fact close enough that when we're here i can just go right stuff the map view let's start using our targeting speed uh you'll see that i'm headed towards uh retrograde targeting uh that is because i was trying to null all our speed down so that we are in a very close orbit and then just slowly push myself towards it trying to keep that prograde marker as close to the pink targeting marker as possible because that is how you get close um waiting now for the uh what's the word i'm looking for the physics load in uh, about two and a half kilometers I have a little bit of a pause but nothing really to worry about if not anything else you would have just noticed it as a camera shake and we we're getting closer and closer there you'll see um a little bit ahead we had the lifting stage that i'd managed to turn away from the sun uh we will be dealing with that momentarily but the first thing we need to do is get a full orbit uh, a full rendezvous on the go full orbit what am i on about uh, so my plan here is just to um, speed past it. Well, I say speed past it, drift past as slow as possible, stop myself using my RCS because I did indeed remember to pack some RCS this time. This is one of the things that I do forget quite regularly is to put RCS on, on ships that need to uh, rendezvous like this. And then just basically back it in there using my like superior reversing skills. Uh, it took me a little moment to, to spin the vessel around, make sure that like the orientation in my head is the same as the orientation on the game. Because uh, obviously there's like three or four different orientations that, that you could be thinking of whilst getting whilst trying to um to dock up like this and i always find it nice to have the nav ball and the screen at least sort of semi 
uh, related to each other. And there we go, perfect rendezvous. Uh, I'm going to come in later on with the Kerbal attachment system and put some support struts in there. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the, the big docking port seniors to put on the front, so we kind of have to make do with the, with the uh, clampertrons and then put some support structures around it, which should be fine. Right, so we're going to go out now with, uh, I believe this is Bill, our engineer, and just give this thing a bit of a nudge. Uh, we, we can see the solar panels on top there, and that was all we needed. It was just a, just enough of a nudge to, to get enough power that we could point ourselves prograde, or well, retrograde, sorry, and get this thing deorbiting again. Um, good work, Kerbal, my friend. Here, that was definitely what we were going for, and just the smallest of flights will put us back home and safe. All right, so deorbiting burn the same way as we were doing last time. Getting rather close to the space center there. I've got a few things scattered around my space center that let me know uh, when I'm landing close by. Uh, of course, we have like one of the real early flights, uh, the, the real early, sorry, uh, plane flights, the, the lucky any landing you can walk away from flight. That, that was great. Uh, if you remember, we only had one cockpit surviving from that, but that was all we needed because then uh, Rich Mal could get out and just do everything he needed to do. Uh, commemorated of course with a flag as you know, is the best way to commemorate such things in Kerbin uh, and once again our orange tank spontaneously exploded when we hit the water I'm starting to think it's made from like some super anti-water stuff uh, and just annihilates whenever it comes into contact with water so time for the last lift of this particular episode, Dr. Hang, our hang glider. Uh, you can see quite easily what my idea was for getting it up into orbit here. Uh, I put some radial decouplers on its wings. Um, I, I did this in quite a special way actually. I put radial decouplers down, then a support strut, then some more radial decouplers so that we could completely just get everything off the wing without leaving little bits everywhere. Or at least that was my plan anyway. Now that I've stopped and thought about it pro post process, it was a little bit um, unnecessary but it did the job it, it did what we were going for uh, and that was kind of what was important here was getting this thing up into orbit uh, obviously trying to fly a wing through an atmosphere is always a little bit awkward uh, I, I aimed just a little bit off of where we wanted to be so that the wing could do a lot of lifting um, at least acting like it was supposed to be acting rather than trying to just power my way through like a rocket because we all know that never works and I put myself in, in a really nice position to be able to get a rendezvous going up uh, I'm obviously a little way behind um, our, our finished vessel I don't know what we're going to call the finished vessel but I'm a little way behind the, the, the vessel and that, that's good because I'm also a little bit lower down in orbit and as we all know the lower orbits go round quicker um, and then we can catch up uh, I also had the idea here to do the uh, the same way of saving all my uh, lifting technology here um, it worked incredibly well I decided to wait and do each one individually this time so we wouldn't end up losing uh, parts to the atmosphere and that was great but I also did end up with this sort of asymmetrical tilt again which once again is the thing that leads to things exploding um, like like that but that was fine I mean an engine and an SAS unit probably the most expensive bits on there thinking about it but at least i get some stuff back you know empty fuel tanks and stuff so i, I did this uh well four times obviously um but we, we also again had problems with power uh so whilst i'd realized this problem i thought it'd probably be a good idea to find the units that that weren't really doing very well spin them around to look at the sun and at least i would have like a backup going here because none of these things had any batteries on them so the the the, the slow tick of the probe body ticking down was enough to empty out almost all the power that was in the probe bodies whenever we got into the shadow of the planet which was a bit rubbish and once again lost an engine and an sas unit again maybe not the best things to be lo use losing sorry uh, we'll have to try and figure out a nice way of making this work better. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's all down to just getting my uh, parachutes better balanced because all I did was throw them on like one top, one bottom. And we all know that that is not how you balance a spacecraft. So setting up alarms for our rendezvous here and you will note that this vessel is almost entirely under RCS power. Now I won't say almost entirely, it is entirely under RCS power now. 
while strapping all the lifting technology around the outside, I thought it'd be a good idea to put some RCS thrusters on the very outside of the wings. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but right on the back of uh, where the Kerbal sits, there is also one of those radial uh, monoprop tanks, which can be taken off by a Kerbal, which was my plan. Uh, we can like just move stuff around, put it on, take it off, do, do everything that needs doing. Uh, and here we go, coming in for closest approach. Turns out RCS, very underpowered. I, I knew this anyway, but totally underestimated how slow it would be and just overshot my mark by quite a lot so I spent almost all my time trying to null my speed down to nothing here and then started thinking about the best way to approach this I mean we've got over a kilometer to go so I want to do it relatively quick but at the same time I don't want to overshoot again which means we're gonna have long coasting times of about 10 meters per second as we just get closer and closer and I just don't as I say, want to overdo it. Uh, and now I'm starting to think about how I'm going to approach this vessel, because obviously this wants to be attached in a certain manner. Well, it doesn't really. It could be attached any way it wants to be, uh, as is like the point mass in the middle that I'm going for. But for reasons of style, I'm fairly sure we want the wing attached sideways on. Um, it likes almost perpendicular to the vessel, which I th is what I'm trying to do here. You'll, you'll see now that I'm just going to fly around for a little bit. And I, it's really hard to talk about what my thought process here. You know, I'm just trying to make sure that one of the docking ports is all the way at the bottom. And then I'm going to try and shimmy, shimmy myself underneath the vessel and just slowly glide my way up. Hopefully that gives me enough time to uh, get my get my direction sorted. Now, one of the main problems here is I've got no sort of sideways capabilities. For some reason, I didn't um, attach any sort of sideways facing thrusters here. Uh, uh, the main reason I did that was because I was thinking in terms of rockets for some reason. I was just like, right, well, we just push backwards and then everything works out all right. And of course, when we're up and uh, trying to dock, uh, it doesn't quite work out as, as simply as that. Uh, as demonstrated by all these really, really close misses, I kept on squirting up, bashing into the tank, knocking away at a, a funny angle, trying to correct myself, but obviously without the sideways lateral yeah, sideways lateral control. I was really, really having a bit of trouble with this. We'll take the opportunity here to uh, point out the RCS tank on the front there. Wicked camera angle with that. And now I'm kind of, go, kind of going for a different approach. I've decided that I'm going to go far away, completely know my speed whilst looking directly at it. Go take control of the Ignis. Spin the docking port that I want to face directly at the vessel that I've got coming in. And then slowly, ever so slowly, drift my way towards it like facing directly at it because I could, I've got all the control that I want to as long as I'm traveling directly forwards then when I get close enough I'm just going to slowly rotate myself around and use my RCS thrusters to try and push myself in there now obviously this first one didn't work out overly well um, and I'm like mm, what can I do here what can I do if I just like stop everything spin the ignis round to face the correct direction and then you use my thrusters to push up again we get this lovely connection here now i was facing in the wrong direction and this means that i've got to come out spin myself around try and like push myself back up uh and it gets, it gets very awkward i'm not i'm sure some of you have uh, had this experience before where you're like wow this isn't exactly how i want it on the docking port time to undock and spin round and you never really get far enough away to let it like forget that it's been docked and yeah all sorts of weird things happen but with this docking i'm gonna say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure i will see you next time when we're gonna fill up those other two docking ports and maybe make our way to juna bye